Hey guys, Hamstable here and welcome to episode 3 of the Underdogs of Raiding. Today we're going to talk about a spec that is one of my favorite specs ever in World of Warcraft. A spec that I had the pleasure to try out on multiple expansions. I'm talking about the Smite Priest. As always, let's start off at the beginning of World of Warcraft. So let's once again travel back in time to 2004. The Smite Priest is an odd one in the mix. While Balanced Druids and Elemental Shamans had a whole talent tree dedicated to that one spec, Smite Priests were a little different. I mean the two talent trees we know of are Holy and Discipline. But both a Holy Priest and a Discipline Priest are almost always associated with healing and survivability. However, when you made yourself a Priest and you started leveling in Vanilla World of Warcraft, your first damaging spell you could use was Holy. That's right, Smite rank 1. So doing damage with Holy was something every priest grew up with. But sadly this way of doing damage was forgotten as soon as a priest got to higher level and decided to go for damage rather than healing. Ever since day one in World of Warcraft, everyone knew that the Shadow Tree was the one you'd spec into if you wanted to do damage. This meant that if you went Shadow, doing Holy damage sort of faded away after you got deeper and deeper into the Shadow Tree with Mind Flay and eventually Shadow Form, which prevented you from casting Holy spells altogether. Another thing that Smite Priests had against them was that certain spells were a lot weaker, and they lacked key talents to boost their damage. You see, this was the talent tree Priests had in the beginning of the game. As you can see, the top talent in the Discipline Tree was Divine Spirit. Power Infusion wasn't a thing back then, it simply wasn't a game yet. Not to mention Holy Fire had a 5 second cast time, making DPS as a Smite Priest even more painful. If you still decided to go for Holy DPS, your rotation was as follows. Open with Holy Fire, apply Shadow Word Pain, spam Smite until the target was dead and use Mind Blast when it's off cooldown. No, early vanilla, Shadow was the go to spec for damage and anyone who even tried to do Holy DPS as a Priest found themselves doing lackluster DPS that didn't come close to their shadowy brothers. That being said, things did start to look up in the later stage of vanilla. Here's the talent tree we all know from vanilla private servers, and as you can see we now have power infusion, holy fire is no longer a talent and was changed from having a 5 second cast to a 3 second cast, and instead priests got holy nova, which basically worked the same as arcane explosion, but it also healed nearby friendly players. With the revamp of the talent trees, some people started getting curious. Is there a way to do some proper holy damage in World of Warcraft? I mean, we got power infusion to give us 20% extra spell damage. Oh wait, we got holy specialization to give us 5% crit for holy spells. Divine fury for reduced cast time for smite and holy fire. Searing light for another 10% damage to those two spells. Could this actually work? While most priests stuck to shadow to deal damage, a handful of priests started to look elsewhere and decided to give Discipline Holy a go. And what do you know, it actually kinda worked. With the right gear and a spell damage trinket, Smite Priests were dishing out some pretty decent damage. I had the pleasure of playing a level 60 priest with that exact spec on the Phoenix Warsong server, and I managed to do some good damage in dungeons and surprise some enemy players while doing battlegrounds. The rotation was still the same, Holy Fire as your opener, followed by applying Shadowward Pain, then smite till the cows come home and use Mind Blast when it's off cooldown. So what happened? I mean, if they could do decent damage, how come the spec never really caught on? Well, there are a few problems. First of all, Shadow was simply more powerful and it brought more crucial buffs to the table. Think of Shadow Weaving, which made people do 10% more shadow damage to the target, which meant that every raid brought at least one Shadow Priest just to buff the damage of the Warlocks. Second of all, Smite Priests were going out of mana very, very quickly. Sure, Shadow Priests had the same problem, but like I said, they provided some great extra buffs which the Smite Priests simply did not. I guess you could argue that Smite Priests provide power infusion to another DPS, but a healing spec Discipline Priest could do the same. Unfortunately, Smite Priests were limited to mostly PvP, where they would troll people with some serious Smite crits and maybe join a few dungeons or two. Raiding was out of the question, and it stayed that way all the way through the last days of Vanilla World of Warcraft. But the next expansion was upon us, and there was hope for the Smite Priest. So now we arrive at the Burning Crusade era of World of Warcraft. 
This is now the talent tree that priests had to work with, and there were a few interesting things here for the smite priests. First of all, they now had enough talents to get spiritual guidance, which would give them extra spell damage through spirit, and they could get searing light, which would give you a 50% chance of your next smite spell to be an instant cast after you deal a critical strike. So a few extra talents which would definitely come in handy, though little changes were made to their rotation, which was still pretty much the same, but with added Shadow or Death and Shadow Fiend for when mana was low. Unfortunately, in the retail days of Burning Crusade, no one really bothered to actually roll as a Smite Priest. Now that Shadow was way more viable in raids and provided very useful buffs to the point that any hardcore raiding guild would make sure that they always had at least one Shadow Priest with them, any damage dealer who was playing a Priest went Shadow. And the Smite Priest was a thing of the past for the most part. Sure, there was the odd priest or two who used it to mess around in PvP, but no one actually raided as one. Even today on Burning Crusade private servers, Smite Priests simply don't exist. Or do they? You see, I decided to give it a go myself, and what I found was quite interesting to say the least. Not only was I able to pull my own weight in dungeons, I actually trounced other DPSers, and in some cases, I even beat all the other damage dealers. They could not believe their eyes. A spec no one rolled with, that no one even bothered to check out, was beating them on the damage meters. Even in raids such as Karazhan or Gruul's Lair, there were many times where I was in the top 5 of the damage meters, and I had so much fun, leaving people completely baffled when I was throwing out one smite crit after another. I'll be honest though, they weren't perfect, else you would have way more smite priests rolling around on Burning Crusade servers. Their main problem was that they went out of mana too fast. Sure, with Shadow Fiend and a mana potion or two, you could last a bit longer, but long fights like Prince Malchazar in Karazhan were simply too long for the Smite Priest, often leaving them out of mana when the boss still had a third of their health left. Another thing they had going against them is something that haunted them since 2004, which is the fact that Shadow Priest simply provided more useful buffs to the raid. Like I said earlier, any hardcore raiding guild took at least one Shadow Priest with them, mainly because of the wonderful buffs they provided which the Smite Priest didn't. This meant that in the Burning Crusade era, the Smite Priest was a fun spec, something you could roll with in dungeons and entry level raids and hey, maybe even some battlegrounds to catch people off guard with some nasty Smite crits, but it wasn't a serious raiding spec. It was a charming little spec, but it simply could not hang with the big boys. And now it's time to talk about the Wrath of the Lich King era of World of Warcraft. Now if you watched the first two episodes of the series, you're probably thinking to yourself, ah, but this is probably the part where the Smite Priest really kicks off. Just like the Balanced Druid and Elemental Shaman, right? Well, I'll keep this era short and sweet. Smite Priests were simply not viable in this era. The Wrath of the Lich King talent tree started focusing too much on healing in both Discipline and Holy, and there were no real benefits of going any deeper into both trees to increase Holy damage. I still decided to give it a go against all odds on Gamer District. I made a priest, got it some ICC gear and spent some time trying to come up with a decent smite spec. I joined a few dungeons and the result was, well, disappointing. I was pulling around 2500 to 3k DPS tops, which considering my gear should have at least been twice as much. So I'm sorry I have to end the wrath era here on a bit of a sour note for the smite priests, but that's all there is to it. In Wrath of the Lich King, Smite Priests were a thing of the past, and they slowly faded away from people's memories. However, this is not where the tale of the Smite Priest ends. Oh no, there was one era in World of Warcraft where the spec actually worked properly. There was one last hurrah for anyone who dreamt of raiding as a Smite Priest, to be part of a 25-man group and smite your target to pieces while being able to compete with the other damage dealers. Usually I only talk about the first three versions of World of Warcraft in this series, but I just had to put this in because yes, Smite Priests were actually viable in Mists of Pandaria. I remember stumbling upon a guide a couple of years ago on how to do Holy DPS in Mists of Pandaria. At first, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Wait, Holy DPS as a viable spec? I have to give that a go. Naturally, I logged on my old priest on Panashan spec the right way and joined a heroic dungeon. What followed were tears of joy. The spec that I always loved but was mocked, ridiculed 
laughed at and never taken seriously by other people for so long was now actually doing decent damage right in front of my eyes. I saw crit after crit, my character climbing in the damage meters and for the first time ever I was able to provide some good damage and not run out of mana within half a minute. Naturally, I fell in love with the spec and I stuck around a bit longer on Panashen just so I could have some fun with the spec. I did dungeon after dungeon and was always giving the other DPS a good run for their money. I mean sure, they were not dominating the DPS charts and were still behind many other classes, but on their own, they were finally able to pull their own weight and more importantly, not go out of mana very fast. So where did this come from? How did they go from doing next to no damage to doing a lot of damage with holy spells? What did Blizzard change in order for this to be a viable way of doing damage? Well, I could explain this to you, or I could also let the guy who made that guide I looked up years ago explain it to you. Because that guy was Hero Merit X, and today he's the featured guest in this episode of the Underdogs of Raiding. Take it away, Hero Merit X. Back in Mr. Pandaria, when Holy Priest used to have the chakra system still, one day Blizzard decided to just give the least used chakra a major buff. You see, Holy Priest had three chakras, one that helped with single target healing, one that helped with AoE healing, and one that increased your damage. Seeing as Holy was a healing spec and gained no healing benefit from the damage boost, no one ever used the red chakra. So when they buffed it to increase your damage by about 50%, Holy Priest all of a sudden could pull decent DPS. If you built for it, which I did because I thought it would be funny to out DPS some of our lower performer DPS players in our raid with a healing spec, and I think I ended up pulling out second or third in DPS when I play tested it in raids, which was kind of sad, but also kind of telling at how good the damage was to an extent. So what you needed to do to hold a DPS was simply take all three of the DPS talents, Power Infusion, Mindbender, and Halo, then take the damage glyphs, glyphs of Holy Fire and Smite, and you were basically set. The glyph of Holy Fire increased the damage of your smite by 20% while Holy Fire was up, which was amazing since half of your DPS was through smite, the other glyph just gave you a 40 yard range on your spells. Your rotation was simple, pop cooldowns, apply shadow word pain, use holy fire off cooldown, and then spam smite. I think one of the biggest things holding the DPS back was all of the dead stats on the spec. Spirit, hit, and mastery were all useless and found on most of your gear, so you only really benefited from crit and haste. Luckily, this was also when reforging was in the game, so you could just reforge a lot of your dead stats into useful stats. But it was still a big deal to have more than half of your stats not give any kind of DPS benefit. So while it may have been viable as a gimmick, it wasn't really something people would clamor towards. And I'd have only really recommended it to people who were just really bad at DPS and wanted an incredibly simple rotation and wanted to do decent damage off of that simple rotation. And thank you very much for that Hero Meridex. If anyone is interested in his content you can find a link to his channel in the description below this video. Anyway, time to wrap up this episode. It's a shame that Smite Priest never really got to be the top dog, but to be fair they still pop up now and then even on today's version of World of Warcraft. Still though, regardless of what will happen with the Smite Priest in the future, they will always live on in Vanilla WoW, the Burning Crusade, and Mists of Pandaria. And that's it for today's episode. I'll be back very soon with another video, but until then, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamster Wheel, and have a good one. Mm -hmm.